Hey everyone! Today I want to review a couple of Arteza products that I've been playing with in the last weeks. Uh, I'm going to be talking about the sketchbooks. This is the one that I have. We'll take a closer look in a minute. And about the gouache paints. I have the 60 set which uh, these were sent to me but the gouache paints I bought from my own money because I thought they were intriguing and yeah I thought we could do or I could do the review of these two together kind of to save us some time and to make things a little bit more interesting so if you enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe hit the notification bell all those things uh, don't forget to check out my other videos i've been posting quite a bit in the last few days i'm very proud of myself <laughs> and hopefully i will continue to do so in the month of uh, july i'm aspiring to post every like a video on every weekday we'll see how that goes and um, yeah, July is watercolor month and although today we won't be talking about uh, kind of classical water watercolors, even though gouache, I would say they're kind of in the same realm, but we will get to that soon. Um, yeah, there are tons of watercolor videos on my channel, like my favorite products, uh, some urban sketching, some like stamping with watercolors and all those good things. So, let's get to the review. Let's start with the sketchbooks. Now, these come in a set of two. I know they have different kinds of sketchbooks with different kinds of papers and different bindings and different covers, but these are the ones that I have and let's just take a closer look. So this has 64 pages, it is cold press paper, dual sided, acid free, natural linen bound, and this is the size, it's an A4 size, and the paper weight is 230 grams per square meter or 110 pounds. Um, they say here that there's a smooth side and a textured side. And as I said, they come in a set of two. So this one is brand new. And then this one I have been using. Uh, according to the contact person that um, like emailed me, <laughs> these are cruelty-free and vegan, which for me is fantastic news because all my previous sketchbooks are not. So... Um, I personally really really like the cover. I prefer a fabric cover to um, the kind of more leather looking ones that for example the Stillman and Byrne have but this is uh, you know strictly a personal preference. Uh, I don't know I also find the light color somehow a little bit less intimidating than those black uh, books, but that's just me. So we have here this uh, elastic band, which is nice and then the journal itself I do see uh, a difference between the Smoother side and the more textured side. I'll try to get you to I Don't know if the camera will pick it up I think you can see a little bit of that texture and then this side is rather smooth so this I was testing their watercolor pencils which will be coming in um, a video soon and I have a process video for this on my channel so I've just been playing around with this with watercolors with gouache uh, sketching and I have to say I this uh, is also you can find this video on my channel I'm really enjoying this sketchbook it is stitched so you can see uh, which is my preferred method of uh, binding for sketchbooks and then the signatures are glued to each other and that's pretty much the one um, issue that I have with this journal is that where the signatures are glued if you want the pages to really lie flat 
you have to kind of separate them and then you get a little bit of this type of thing going on. Um, I don't think it really matters to, well, I don't know how in time, if these will kind of fall apart, they might. Um, it doesn't really bother me, but I just want to give you all the information so you can decide for yourself. Um, besides that one thing, these feel really, really nice to me. Now the back page has this um, like folder, transparent folder. So this is really nice. You can keep here maybe um, like ephemera or memorabilia or something like that. Ooh, that would be a good idea. Like a grayscale. And that's about it. So I, for me, I think these are a great option. I think they are quite good value for the price. They feel really nice. I haven't tried the other ones, so I can only talk about these, but I'm really happy with them. I've been also taking this with me outside. I gotta say, pretty much all of my other sketchbooks, once they are full, they do look a bit beat up. So I don't um, think like the, the wear and tear on this is anything different. Uh, the paper, I haven't done like really, really heavy washes here. Um, I don't tend to really like, you know, drown my sketchbooks in water. Uh, if you do do that, I really think the cutty ones are <laughs> the best <laughs> for those purposes. But for light washes, this worked really well. I like the way that the color blends and I like the way that granulation shows here, shows up on this paper. You can see that the granulating colors um, look rather nice. Probably better, they look better on the, um, on the more textured side. And yeah, I, I can only say like good things about this with the exception of that, the way that the page uh, pages separate where the signatures are glued. But again, to me, it's not a big um, issue. So the journals definitely get a thumbs up for me. If I wanted to take these on like a trip or something, I think I would search for a smaller size. Uh, even though I am enjoying this, so it's, again, this is really like personal preference, but I think it's good value for money. And there's also this uh, cute, what's it called? You know, this thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the gouache. I got the 60 set, which looks like this. So this is way too much paint for anyone to ever use. And I got this set because I'm very drawn to like tertiary colors and some of these like muted pastel colors, which you can't find many times in smaller sets. Also, I thought the price was great and I did see reviews before I bought these. So I decided to just go for this set. Now, I don't think I will use all of the colors, but I also think this is something that my kids can enjoy. Um, these are, again, cruelty-free, vegan, and non-toxic. And what I did, I took this old, um, or old, like empty case of Prima pencils, and I filled it with like, empty pans and half pans and then I added the colors that I thought would be the most useful to me. Before we get into the demo I just want to show you the colors that come in the set and I was actually a little bit surprised that there were so few saturated bright colors. Um, of course, I am, you know, naturally drawn to those, but I also think that they kind of give you 
the most versatility and possibility to mix other colors when if you look at the more like muted colors pastel colors those you know if you love them as they are that's fantastic and i do uh, really love a lot of these shades like the pastels here are great they have some of these um, kind of more like coffee mocha browns taupey colors which I love um, but those are you know when you mix them with others you get very muddy colors you can make beautiful muddy colors but it just doesn't offer as much versatility as more primary or saturated colors so when I'm looking at those um, I have a couple of like a more lemony yellow here an orangey yellow um, I wouldn't say like maybe this one is kind of a, a more primary yellow but then you have like three oranges yellow oranges they're really similar to each other like these two are almost identical and with the reds there are like a few saturated reds there's this more of a magenta color i wish there was a, a brighter pink that is not fluorescent you can't see it on the camera because fluorescent colors just don't translate to cam cameras but this one is completely neon which is fun is in mixtures but it's just not as versatile as like maybe a, a bit a lighter brighter version of this magenta color uh, the blues we have like ultramarine and then a couple of other blues which would work well a few bright greens uh, this one is like I really like this but it probably has some white in it so all in all I feel like there could be a few more bright colors uh, maybe something a little bit lighter but obviously with these you can mix anything you have white you have black, you have gray, you have a few primaries. You could really mix anything, but I just wanted to show you uh, everything that comes in the set. And also take a closer look at the tubes. So let's zoom in. So here is one, uh, for example, this one is Ballerina Pink. It's actually one of the kind of few that uh, the paint is different than the color of the like sticker here most of them are pretty accurate this one is a little different so that's why I added a bit of paint here so what do we have each tube is 12 milliliters and they have here uh, light fast rating I think these pluses are these are designed in the US manufactured in China and We can see also the pigments written here. So you can see this particular one has three pigments and the opacity, which this color is opaque. This one, for example, peach red is more of a transparent color. So the square is not full. And this one is like that fluorescent color. It is yeah, it only has two pluses, so not as light fast as this. I thought it would be fun to also show you a little bit uh, these paints in action. This is just, you know, playtime in my journal, not trying to be super fancy or create any kind of masterpiece here. <laughs> Mostly just uh, playing around with these colors and seeing how they perform. Now, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about gouache in general and then about these. Uh, bottom line, I'll save you the hassle if you don't want to watch another 10 minutes. I think they're great. I think they are definitely worth the price. And I have also artist grade gouache in my stash from Windsor and Newton, uh, Holbein. I think these totally, you know, uh, stand their ground. And uh, yeah, great set if you want all the colors. And you could definitely go for a smaller set and just mix 
some yourself. Now, gouache are in theory or what most people define them as is opaque watercolors. And that is true to some extent, uh, but it really depends on the pigment and the specific paint or color. Some are more transparent and some are more opaque. Same as watercolors. I think most people that use gouache use them differently than they would with watercolors because I think if you use them exactly like you use watercolors, there isn't a ton of difference in my opinion. Um, their kind of uniqueness, I guess, comes when you use them with a thicker application than you would with watercolors. And what I personally love about them is that you can almost get the experience and look of acrylic paint without actually dealing with acrylic paint. I am a much better friend of water soluble media like gouache that you can rewet and is not permanent once dry. Now, for me, what was important was to see if I squeezed these paints into pans like you saw in that tin that I showed you, how they would, uh, how they rewet, and if I can use them like technically in the same way that I use watercolors, meaning dried in a palette and reactivating them. I prefer that because I just find it so much uh, user friendly and easier to grab a palette with a ton of paints and not have to squeeze out paint from tubes and like mess around with all the tubes. That's, that's my personal preference. I, I really feel like I need my supplies to be uh, very user friendly and very fast and available to kind of make me want to use them. So these rewet really nicely. If you want a more juicy, thick, um, opaque application, spray them with water and let it sit for a few moments before you start painting. If you want that maximum opacity and kind of thicker application like you would expect from acrylic paint, then best is to use them straight from a tube. It's not a problem. It works fantastically. That's what I'm doing actually here. I just squeezed some paints onto this uh, palette and it works great. I always have issue because I always, you know, I squeeze too much paint and then I don't know what to do with it. And then I, it's just stuck there and I don't want to waste it. So that's just like my own private uh, issues with it. But it does uh, dry really nicely. Some gouache paints will get kind of really crumbly and very, they crack and they don't dry as nicely as others. Um, I think it's also a matter of, you know, time. If you don't use them heavily, I would say just squeeze a very small amount into a palette. I wouldn't, it's not like watercolors where I can be kind of confident that even if I don't touch that palette for months, uh, the paints will look the same. The gouache doesn't always have that kind of stickiness to it that allows it to stick to the palette and kind of stay put. And uh, yeah, it tends to dry out a bit more from my experience. Um, again, with the color range, you know, it's it's really what you see is what you get from the samples that I showed you, like the swatches, some of the paints are brighter and more transparent and those tend to give you more versatility. But then you also have to kind of know how to mix colors. So I do think the set, while the color selection is not, it's not perfect in my opinion, but if I could kind of curate a set uh, I would do it a bit differently. Some colors are too close together and then some are a bit redundant. But all in all, you can pretty much mix anything from the set. And I do really love their kind of lighter, 
more pastel -y neutral colors. I think those are beautiful and I do enjoy incorporating them um, into my artwork. I think that's about covers, everything I want to say about these. If you have any questions or, you know, you want to share your own opinion about these, uh, by all means, leave it in the comments. You know, people want to hear as many opinions as they can. And I would definitely appreciate yours uh, as well as other people that read the comments. I really enjoyed these. I definitely see myself using them again, probably mostly from that tin that I showed you. And I think for me personally, their advantage over my uh, watercolor palettes are probably those lighter pastels that have more opacity to them because the bright uh, gouache are kind of similar to my watercolors and I personally like to use a kind of very uh, juicy watercolors so yeah they they really perform similarly to me and these are really great for kind of illustrations you can layer them and really have fun with these I think it's a, a great start if you want to get into gouache, I definitely think there's a learning curve to this medium, especially if you want to use it more like acrylic paint and not as watercolor. Uh, I mean, in that thicker application, there's a learning curve for sure. You can see how nicely it layers and how opaque um, those lighter colors are. There's really a lot you can do with this, and this set has such a great price point. Yeah, I'm just repeating myself. So I'm going to play you a little bit of music until I'm done uh, painting, and I will see you soon in another video. I have brush pen review coming up, and also their watercolor pencils watch out for that and thank you for watching subscribe hit the notification bell like all those things and have a wonderful day bye